Oh, they will fail on you, no doubt about it. It's not an if, it's a when. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I have a list of about seven parts on your Q50 that will fail. I'll throw a couple honorable mentions in at the end as well, so stick around for that. Number one on the list is your factory brake rotors. Specifically, or at least more commonly in the sport rotors, they tend to warp. Now, we don't actually mean that the rotors warp or curve. They just tend to develop hot spots or uneven heating and glazing, uh, causing there to be like a pulsation in the pedal. There can be some noisy characteristics to it. Just they seem to just be prone to it. So if you have a sport with the factory rotors, don't be surprised if that happens to you. Number two, I'm gonna say factory Q50 suspension. The shocks seem to fail more commonly and earlier in these cars than really any other I've experienced in the past. Of course, if you install lowering springs, the chances of shock failure increase. Uh, but I've had vehicles in the past with 100 plus thousand miles on them install lowering springs on the factory shocks and had no problems 30, 40,000 miles of driving, sold the vehicle with no issues. Uh, it seems like in these Q50s you can install lowering springs at 60,000 miles and by 70,000 you're blowing shocks all over the place. I can't tell you how many cases of people blowing their factory shocks at 40 or 50,000 miles in these cars. I don't know if people are just driving them like crazy or if the factory suspension is just trash. Number three seems to be a very, very common problem, and that is the blend door actuator. In the summertime, if you turn on your AC and you notice it's only blowing cold on one side of the car, there's your problem. This is just a small, rather inexpensive part and a relatively easy fix, but a dealership will charge you a bunch of money to do it, so I'm sure you can tackle this on your own. And in fact, I'm starting to see some symptoms of this part failing on my personal Q50, so you may or may not see uh, a how-to video coming from me relatively soon. Until then, however, check out the video that Fox Craze put up a while back. Very, very simple, very, very straightforward instructional video. I don't know if you can improve upon that video at all. It's an easy one to follow. Link in the description below if you're experiencing that issue in your Q50. Check that video up. You'll be happy you did. Save yourself some money. Number four is for those of you looking into the 3.0T. Turbos, turbo failure seems to be a very common and unfortunate problem because it's expensive if you're out of warranty. A lot of this failure, of course, like anything, can come from uh, you know modification and tuning and overspooling the turbos. But we're seeing turbo failure in factory, just you know, stock vehicles as well, and that's a problem. Another common failure for the 3.0T guys, and number five on the list is shredding or throwing a serpentine belt. It's not a dig of the 3.0T guys, it's just the nature of the beast. Now, I will say that this this problem was remedied in the newer model uh, Q50s and 60s, but in the uh, early, you know, early gen 2016 Q50s, pay attention, pay attention for signs and symptoms of belt failure. You hear some chirping, but it's misaligned on the pulley, and that can cause a problem for you. Uh, just make sure you you uh, stay vigilant. Guys, before I get to the last two items on this list of Q50 parts that will definitely fail on you, make sure you go to the description below and click on the link to the Speed Culture Studios holiday giveaway. Get yourself entered to win the VQ37 test pipes and a big box of super clean products along with a bunch of other accessories, Speed Culture t-shirt, keychain, stickers, decals, etc., etc. You don't want to miss out on this opportunity. Again, after this video, go to the description below, click on that link to the giveaway video. Thanks a lot, let's get to the rest of them. Number six, while we're on the topic of the 3.0T, injector failure. That seemed to be a common issue in the Q50 3.0Ts as well, attributed to apparently a bad fuel rail. I guess there was a service bulletin put out for this and even a, a new fuel rail or new, newly designed fuel array rail was put out uh, for the community to uh, make this change and, and uh, remedy the issue or decrease the potential of injector failure. Now injector failure on any vehicle is not a good thing, whether they're stuck open, whether they're leaking, whether they're not injecting fuel properly, it can lead to all sorts of issues and issues that are difficult to diagnose with running improperly, having to change out spark plugs, smoking, misfires, etc., etc. No bueno. Keep an eye on it. If you haven't, changed your fuel rail already or if you haven't experienced fuel injector issues it's quite possible you will and number seven finally a big one and that is transmission valve body failure on the vq37 seven speed automatic not good you'll potentially experience some erratic driving some jolting some jutting some rpms hanging potentially not wanting to go into gear it's just the valve body is not functioning properly, not allowing the transmission to shift gears as it should. For some reason, around 65 to 70, 75,000 miles, they just seem to quit. You may or may not see evidence of a failure coming, 
or pending doom, as some might say. It may just happen to you all of a sudden, but nonetheless, it seems like that is the time period in which this occurs. By this time, unfortunately, we're generally out of warranty and it's a pretty expensive fix. I almost forgot, guys. Number eight on the list is a rear differential bushing. These tend to fail. They're very common, a very common failure point on the uh, the uh, G35s, G37s, 370Zs, 350Zs, but they're also a very common failure point on the Q50s now as well. Around 50, 60, 70,000 miles or so, these rear diff bushings uh, tend to get brittle and crack, and then they release that silicone, black, gooey, liquidy, greasy oil stuff down your rear diff, and you'll notice it's making all sorts of mess, and you might start hearing some clunking noises between shifts or at hard launches. It's because that bushing has failed and released all of that sort of you know squishy material it's no good and unfortunately for the q50 there's no replacement right now so the dealership is going to try to get you to buy a whole new uh, rear subframe that includes that diff bushing which is a, just a small component and it's like a thousand dollars or more and then they're going to charge you a thousand dollars or more for labor to replace the whole damn thing it's insane but i'm getting more and more questions now about it and it's becoming quite apparent that this is a common failure for the Q50. It sucks. I checked with Z1, however, and they tell me that they expect a Q50 rear diff bushing relatively soon. Whether that means next week or next year, I don't know, but hopefully sooner than later. Oh God, I can't believe I forgot to mention this, but your hood struts and the shocks for your deck lid, they're definitely gonna fail on you. It's the common, it, common Nissan and Infiniti issue, but they're definitely gonna fail on you in the Q50 if you haven't already. It's one of the first parts I swapped out was the deck lid struts. It just would slam, my wife and daughter particularly, would just slam that thing down. The struts weren't there to protect it. Hood struts failed shortly after that, just randomly fell on my head, wouldn't stay open. Watch out for that. For all the things on this list, a lot of people will say, well, maintenance, maintenance, gotta keep up with your car. And that's true, there are some people that just don't maintain their vehicles and they treat them like crap. So you do break suspension components. Uh, you, If you're not paying attention, your belt could snap without you being aware of it, causing other problems. Yes, definitely keep an eye on things and keep your vehicle properly maintained. But unfortunately, a lot of the stuff on this list, or most of it, is sort of out of our control. You can't really control when the valve body goes out, whether you are you do a fluid change or a fluid flush, which we don't recommend. Um, it just, it could just happen. Uh, the, the door blend actuator, blend door actuator, that's just gonna happen. It has nothing to do with maintenance. Aside from not running over curbs or taking your Q50 off road, there's not really much you can do about, you know, shock failure. Uh, now a couple of honorable mentions. I was actually gonna have the belt failure on the 3.0 TB an honorable mention, but it seemed to be such a common issue on those earlier model Q50s, earlier model 3.0 T Q50s, that it just had to be mentioned. So it's at the forefront of your mind if you happen to be shopping. Uh, you know, you want a Q50, but you want the turbo version. Uh, just pay attention to that or keep that on top of your mind if you do purchase one of these. Uh, another thing is windows. You know, they start to go really, really slow. It's a common issue to have the Q50 have very noisy windows when there's any moisture on them. Uh, but they'll start to slow down on you eventually. And I don't know where, if we're going to get to a point where they stop working, but there's definitely signs of it in the Q50. Pay attention. Another item is the little stuff like this, like the trim, the, the, the chrome or silver, you know, trim starts to peel. This can happen here on your cup holders, on your door handles. Thankfully, it's not happening to me. Uh, the little chrome piece on the uh, you know the window switches that starts to fail and peel up just little little crap like that that i hate now go ahead and take yourself down to the description section below and get yourself entered to win those vq37 test pipes you'll be happy that you did go for it the drawing i should say uh, the ch your chance to enter to win runs through christmas eve 2021 so christmas day will confirm that you followed the instructions laid out in that video and the, the winner will be announced on Christmas Day at some point. But good luck to all of you that enter, and thank you guys very much for watching, but please go to the comment section below and let me know if you know of any other common failure points in the Q50, Q60. I'm curious to know. We, we need to inform the community. These are just seven of the main ones that I could think of right off the top of my head, but now I gotta go. I gotta go. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.